If you want to know how to make this cheesy potato fajita with three meats, stay tuned. What's poppin' my indie fam? It's your girl, India. And I'm here. I'm here. Nah, but, um, I am going to be making dinner tonight. So I decided to include you guys in that little shebang bang. Okay? Um, I am going to be making a Mexican potato fajita. Um, I don't know if everybody at Mexican restaurants sell it, but where I live, they sell it, and it is so delicious. So, um, basically what I'm going to do, because I don't have big baking potatoes, I'm going to cut these up into, you know, probably, maybe fours. I may cut them in fours. And then, yeah, let's, I'm going to show y'all what to do. Okay. Better to tell y'all. It's going to have steak, chicken, shrimp, peppers, uh, pico de gallo, sour cream, all that good jazz. Okay. Let's get into it. First things first, take your potatoes and wash them off because they're very dirty, okay? So, after washing your potatoes, you just gonna cut them like this. Yeah, my son coming. He got me. Cut it like that and then cut it again. I know some of these may cook quicker than others, but some small, they're not all the same size. Because like I said, I don't have my baking potatoes. Let me get a cutting board to make this easy. Get you some oil. Oh, that's water. Don't think we got much in it. And I forgot to get some, so we're going to use a spray pan. Uh, can I take this? Bubble. Right that's that's bubble, it. Bubble, spray pan works bubble, just bubble. fine. Cover your potatoes with oil. Bubble, that's you see it? Is. This is the kind I'm using. Walmart canola oil. I usually use olive oil to sprinkle on it, but like I said, I'm using what I got. And all of my potatoes are covered with oil. I don't know if y'all can kind of tell, but I'm running out. Okay? That should be fine. Very much fine. Okay? And then sprinkle a little salt. This is the best salt made to man. Okay. Himalayan pink salt. Just a little bit. Okay. And that should be enough. And y'all, I'm not still sprinkling. I'm just trying to clean out that part that I did. Okay. The oven is preheated to 400, so I'm just going to wait for it to heat, and then I'm going to slide these into the oven for about ooh, 
maybe 45 minutes. Okay. And I'll be back. Okay, y'all. So next thing that we need to cook um, while we're waiting on our potatoes to cook, we have some steak. Just some thin steak because I'm going to cut it even smaller. We got some shrimp and some chicken. And I'm going to slice that up as well. Um, so while I am doing my other stuff, these are frozen, so I'm going to drop them in some water. Okay, I think that's enough. Maybe small shrimp, so they may shrimp shrink a little bit. But I think that is enough. I'll do my chicken last. Yeah, my son wanna wash dishes, so that's what y'all hear. Okay. And I may not use all the steak, but I'm gonna rinse it a little bit once I cut it. Oh, I may use it all, I don't know. But anyway, so before I put them all together, I'm just going to show you first. So you're going to take this. It's real thin, as you can see, okay? And you just want to cut it into strips, just like that. I probably need to sharpen my knife. Oh, I'm done. Mommy, I'm done. Okay. Okay. And the same way you're cutting this into little strips is the same way you're going to cut your chicken. Get ready to wash it off and season it. Okay. But I'm gonna go wash my chopping board so I can cut up my chicken. Okay, y'all. So I'm back with my chicken all cleaned up and ready to slice. And you're just gonna cut it into strips like this. Now it is up to you. You don't have to cut it as small as me, or you can cut it how you want to cut it. Okay. So like the longer pieces like this, I just take it and cut it in half. You didn't rinse all the flavor off. No. It's on the table.
That's all my chicken. So you're going to put some butter in your pan to cook your meat. But you don't want to put all the meats in at one time because that is cost contamination. So I'm going to cook my steak, take my steak out, put my chicken in, take my chicken out, and then put my shrimp in. Okay, okay so now I have my butter melted. I'm going to drop my steak in that pan. Okay. And season it how you like your, your steak seasoned. But I am going to use a little bit, just a tad bit, of Himalayan pink salt because it's the best salt in the whole wide world. Don't argue with me. Okay? Just a little bit. It still had some in the top. Okay? And then I'm going to use a little bit of that good old Laurie's garlic salt. But not too much. Like so, like that. Some black pepper, just like that, and some granulated onion powder, just a little bit, okay, I hope y'all can see everything, and I'm trying to find, oh there it goes, season salt. More in seasoning salt, seasoned salt, seasoned salt. Seasoned salt. Okay. <laughs> I said all the names for y'all. Okay, just a tad, because I put salt on it already. And garlic salt. So now what I'm gonna do is let it start cooking. And let me get a fork. Okay. Roll it around in the season. Because you don't want to over season it because you got so many different meats and you're going to put salt on that meat and on your shrimp. So you don't want to over season one and have too much salt because everything else is going to be seasoned as well. So don't overdo your seasoning unless you're not going to season your other stuff. I wouldn't overdo it. His stuff on top. Okay. So I'll be back with y'all once this has browned. Okay. So as y'all can see, my meat has browned. There is a little bit of red still in it. Let me show y'all. You can see a little red. Now for me, I'm going to cook it just a little bit longer. But I'm going to take it out because it's going to go in the oven for at least um, for at least 15 minutes. So uh, you don't have to um, cook it all the way, all the way, your steak. So I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer. And then I'm going to take it out. Okay. So that's pretty good right there. I'm going to go ahead and take my steak out and place it on my plate. And now I'm going to go wash my pan out to cook my chicken. Okay, so we're going to start out again with putting some more butter in our clean pan. Okay. Let it melt. Coat our pan. We can go ahead and throw our chicken in there. I'm going to put this in the sink because I don't want salmonella. Okay. Spread it out. 
and go ahead and use the same seasonings. Like I said, don't over season your chicken because everything is going to be seasoned from your chicken, steak, and your shrimp. So you don't want to overdo it and have salty food. This is my onion powder. Onion powder is not going to make your food salty. Okay. Just a little bit of, of Himalayan pink salt. Just a little bit of onion, I meant not onion powder, y'all. Sorry, garlic salt. Because you don't want to use too much salt. Like I said, I'm using three different salts, so I'm just using a tad bit of each. A little seasoning salt. And some pepper. And I'll be back once the chicken gets a little brown, we'll get some brown spots on it. Okay, y'all, so the chicken is done, as y'all can see. Mm -hmm. If y'all want it to be, you know, a little brown, then leave it in like I am. But it is done, so I'm going to let it get a little pan seared. Okay, and I'm going to wash my pan and put my shrimp in. So now I am back with a clean pan again, melting my butter. And y'all, I clean my pan, like I said before, every time because I don't want my stuff cooking on some, I don't know, like cross contamination. And I don't want my food to be like cooking in the other, I don't know. It's just me, okay? If you want to do it, more power to you. Okay, so my butter has melted. And I'm about to put my shrimp in. Because shrimp cook fast. I'm going to season my shrimp. Now my shrimp, I'm not going to put everything on it that I put on the other one just because I don't want to. I'll put some onion powder on there. Cause put some garlic because who don't like garlic shrimp? Just a little tad. Just a little tad. Just like that. Put a little bit of seasoning salt. I'm just not going to use the uh, Himalayan pink salt. Just a little bit. And some black pepper. let my shrimp do their thing they a little some of them got a little bit of ice on them so that's why the pot kind of cooled off but it'll be okay it don't take for two minutes but like i said i had a little bit of ice on my shrimp so that's why it cooled the pan off 
The potatoes have about five minutes in the oven left. And I'll pull them out and show y'all those. So my shrimp, I'm pretty much just letting them pan sear now. All my butter has ran out my pot, but they're done already. I'm just letting them pan sear pretty much. Getting a little brown soon. After about 45 minutes, this is what your potatoes will look like, like little wedges, okay? And now I'm going to take some a bowl, put my butter in it, and melt it in the microwave. So I'm going to use about a stick, which I could have just used this whole stick and that would have been done, but you know. I wanted to use the soft one first. And I'm gonna put it in the microwave for about So y'all, while we wait on the onions, I meant, sorry. While we wait on the butter to come out, I got some onions and peppers that I'm gonna put in here. I'm gonna saute some onions and peppers. Let my butter melt down. This is the best part for me, y'all. I love my onions and my peppers on my food. Okay. You don't have to have the onions and peppers, but I'm telling you, it bring that bang. It bring that shebang. If you don't eat onions and peppers, who are you missing out? Okay. So, I'm going to just go ahead and use all these because I like a lot of onions and peppers. saute just a little bit because like I said they're going in the oven so I'm going to saute just a little bit while we are waiting on that we're going to focus on this right here just put that in there and you're just going to cover your potatoes with butter like so like that okay Y'all see me covering them potatoes. I don't want to block y'all from seeing. Yeah. Right mm-hmm. I'm about to look. Hold on. Y'all, I've gotten to the point of recording that as long as it's not nothing bad being said. I'm keeping all the recording that I'm putting on there, whether we talking or not, okay? I heard that y'all like to hear and see that everybody have a little noise in their background. Okay, so they pretty much cover really good with butter. Mm -hmm. A little extra ain't gonna hurt. And the butter that you have left over, you can put on top of it once you uh get plated. Okay? That's how they do it at the restaurant that I had this at. Okay, and I think that's, that should be good. Okay. And our peppers, as you can see, is still, y'all can see both good. So my peppers are still, uh, still sauteing. And like I said, you don't have to cook them too much. Just get them soft. It's not eggs, baby. Yeah, my baby wants some eggs. You want some eggs? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he wants. He keep coming saying, is this eggs? I asked him if he wants some uh potato. He said no. Okay, so those are sauteing perfectly, y'all. So while we're waiting on that to finish sauteing, we can go ahead in with our chicken steak and shrimp 
Okay. And what you're gonna do is the easy thing. Uh, let me move this over here. Take your steak, just like that. Drop it on top. I'm gonna put it on half because I don't think my sister gonna eat steak on hers. So I'm gonna leave a little bit without, just in case. Okay. But you can top your whole thing with steak. Y'all, that is my child beating on the door. Like he has lost his everlasting sense of mind. Okay. And then you're just going to take your chicken and do the same thing. It's like a loaded baked potato, but it is a potato fajita with chicken, steak, and shrimp. Put a little bit more chicken over there than I did over here. And then we're going to go in with our shrimp, just like that. So you're just covering it up. You'll at least get a shrimp in every bite, okay? And that's what it's going to look like on top. Y'all, I just love the way this looks. Oh, you can't have a potato fajita without it. Without it. And what I'm going to do is add some butter. A little more butter on top of my meat. You don't gotta be too much. Just, you know, sprinkle it on like that. You don't want your meat to dry out while it's in that oven, honey. And usually when I go to um, get this from the restaurant, I get extra, um, Peppers and onions. And y'all see them browning? That's it. Yes, that's what you want to see. This is what we came to see. It's so pretty. And I'm going to take these off in just a second. Cause they pretty much soft now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my kitchen timer on to 15 minutes cause I'm good for forgetting stuff. And I ain't gonna put it on yet until I put my food in the oven. So this is good. You see they got a little brown tip to them. If you can't see them, you can see it there. They got a little brown to them. That's what I'm looking for. So now I'm going to take my onions and peppers and I'm just going to sprinkle them on top. Everybody in my household eat onions and peppers on a um, potato fajita. So. We all pretty much get extra onions and peppers. Okay. Don't leave no onions in that pan. Losing some flavor. Okay. Okay, so now that you're at this step, you just need to add your cheese on top. I'm going to be using uh, mild cheddar and Kobe Jack as my two cheeses. Um, I usually use Kobe Jack. But 
using what we got. And then the rest I'm going to do what we get. Perfect. It is covered with cheese, as it should. And I'm going to sprinkle some more butter on top of that as well. Really, I could just do it like, like that. Okay. And now we're going to put this back in the oven for 15 minutes. Or pretty much until your cheese melts. Because I have it on 400 still, so it may not take as long for my cheese to melt, but I'm going to go ahead and put it back in. Um, I say 15 minutes, but I will let y'all know if I do different timing. If you put it on 350, it's going to probably be in there for about 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and put it back in the oven. So on, four, so on 400, um, I only put it in for about 8 minutes. Um, and this is a closer up view. Mm -hmm. And I will show you it plated um, so that you can see what I add on top of it. Okay, be right back. This is the finished plating. The cheese has melted. Y'all see those potatoes. Put some pico on top with some sour cream. I don't eat sour cream, y'all, but this is for husband. There's a potato, the steak. Mm -hmm. And then go you a quick and easy meal. Potato fajita. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in to another video with me. If y'all enjoyed seeing me make this potato fajita, you try it at home and let me know how it turned out for you. Go ahead and comment down below. Like, subscribe, and hit the post notification bell.